Hi, I'm Yao Siki, and this is my story. One, two, one, two, three, hey! Doctor told me my chances of losing my breath in seconds was 95% in a near fatal car accident. I'm here today saved by grace, forgiven and healed. Second chance. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 14th April, late hour. My birth name is Isaac Okai. Um, I'm, I'm the second and last born of my parents. Um, I just have an elder brother. And being the last born, I've always felt a bit special sometimes. They treated me a bit special. I've been singing since childhood, junior high, senior high. I started rapping. And after my senior high, I started recording demos. And then in the process of recording demos, I met one of Tema's finest producers. And he gave me a chance to record a master's and come out with my first song four years ago, which was the Opero. And that's how I got into the music professionally. Kill the beat, kick, 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 kill the beat. To be here again in my spirit and I grew up as a Christian, but I was ignorant about the gospel of Christ. You know, I remember I used to keep even a copy of the Ten Commandments under my bed whilst I was in the world and try to live by it. But I always felt I didn't have an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. So I didn't know Christ then. I stopped going to church and instead of being at church, I was found at other places that was ungodly and, and I got exposed to pornography. That's how the fornication also started and eventually started mat masturbating. And by the time I got to junior high, you know, I had become a hard fan of hip hop. And you know, most of these hip hops that I was, I was listening to talked about weed, 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 smoke weed every day and all that. So I was curious to try weed. And after senior high, it, it was easy for me to try weed. Every day I had to smoke a, a roll of weed. By the time I realized I was in so deep and it became like sort of bondages in my life. I was doing worldly music. I had a little fame. You know, I was playing shows all around. I was out there chilling, drinking, smoking and doing all those pleasurable stuff. But I was empty. I was doing songs to please people. After the highness and all those um, temporal happiness and enjoyment is over, I'm, I'm, I'm back to that emptiness again. It wasn't real. I had an accident that changed me, that made me a new creation now. It was when I was coming back with a friend from a meeting. It was around 9.30 p.m. And when we got to the Accra Motorway toll booth, I, I was a bit tired, so I laid back and dozed off. The next thing that I heard in my ear was my friend's voice saying, ah, the taxi driver, why did he cross me like that? And I was trying to tell him to cool down, not to mind the taxi driver. And then on the third occasion, I realized everything just went off. It was as if I didn't exist. And then I, with my friend beside me trying to console me because I was in so much pain, that lasted for about three minutes. And then I went off again. I woke up from the blackout and then I realized, oh, okay, I've been in an accident. And then I saw the, the, the drips and the hospital sheets and then my brother beside me. And then the next thought that came was, so if I died, was I ready to meet God? That's when I, I started to have the thoughts that I need to get closer to God again. I need to see God, you know, I need to make things right. At that point, I was in so much pain. And later on, with information from the doctors, I got to know that I had broken my neck bone. And the neck bone that got broken was like an inch away from my respiratory system. And if it had pressed on it, I would have lost breath in seconds. But I should thank God. That was when I realized how severe it was and how much God has saved me. So I was in the hollow vest for three months and that was another experience. It was, it was screwed to my head, two pins on my forehead and then two pins at the back of my head. I couldn't take my bath. <laughs> my, my brother had to do a dry washing, had to dry wash me for three months, you know. And I slept on my back for three months. After three months, the doctor checked and said, okay, we can take off the vest now after subsequent checkups he realized that the bone was shifting towards my brain vein and that if it touches my brain vein it will paralyze me so he has to do a surgery on me and i was really disturbed when he told me that because i thought all was it was all over i was even at that point i was even thinking of the kind of songs i'll be bringing out you know I was, <laughs> but he said that we have to do a surgery again i went back home 
you know, I cried that night. I cried unto the Lord. At some point, my prayer was, oh God, if you want me to be healed through the surgery, let it be so. If it's through a, a touch, let it be so. While I was waiting for the surgery to be done, one time uh, an anointing service was held at my church. And during the anointing service, I really felt God's touch that day. And I believed the healing was sealed. So I called the doctor after church and told him that I'm coming the next day for a checkup because I am healed. He said, okay. I went the following day. He took the first x-ray and checked. And then he wrote another request. And it was a bigger scan. He checked it. What he said was, this is common complex you know this is complex and then the next thing he asked me was where do I church I should keep on with my faith that was when I realized God has healed me indeed I they value life I they live I'm right than before your man bianca me yeah I feel it to me yeah no more behun ya me nedo me change some kind of habit so baby I like in the boy me no my any edit life will limit and so I'm a me pep the accident got me into a, a certain situation that didn't allow me to smoke the weed or even think of weed it took my mind off weed and it took my mind off pornography so all, all of my attention was was on God was on Jesus because I needed my healing from God through Jesus and when finally Christ made me a new creation I wasn't feeling for weed anymore but with the pornography I still had the temptation to go and watch porn but I had to say no you know I had to be strong I mean to gospel now I promised God that I will do his work I'll use my potential to serve him so my music my talent my, my, all, all of my skills and talents is channeled towards that now gospel spreading the word sharing the message that I have been sent to share through the music but it's not everybody that gets this second chance I know some of them know they don't belong there but they are finding it hard to lose the world and come and follow Jesus Christ but if you're out there and you're listening to me right now I'm encouraging you to leave the world behind and come to Jesus it is only in God that you have that fulfillment it is only in Christ Jesus that you have that real deep that real joy and happiness so come to Jesus I had a dream and I saw the end times happening you know there were people disappearing and there was lightning and then a, a wailing voice behind me it sounded like a voice of a woman an old woman and, and the message was Christ is coming witness so that is the message that I'm carrying now Jesus Christ is indeed coming again and Jesus is alive I've experienced Jesus Christ Acts 2 17 says that in the last days says God I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh your sons and daughters will prophesy your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams so after I saw that dream this verse came into my mind and I realized these are the last days indeed if you've not given your life to Jesus Christ this is the time for you to do so and if already a Christian God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth worship God hundred percent let us not just call ourselves Christians go to church and then come back home living the worldly life. 